Oh, hello. This is Tak Chung from Walk with Tak. I welcome to my YouTube channel. If you enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, recently, my friend John uh, bought a Cusina 14-inch stainless steel wok. Uh, this is the first wok that he owned. He told me that he's going to adopt my fast cooking system because he likes the idea and he thinks that will really help him uh, with his diet. About a month later, I uh, contacted John and I asked him whether he would need any help and I asked him what kind of stir-fry has he been doing lately. He told me that he still have a hard time to get advanced prepping going, but he has been using the wok on a regular basis. In fact, he used the wok for his everyday cooking to purpose. He always loves chili and he used to cook chili in a frying pan. And after he has got the wok, he decided he's going to try to make the chili in the wok. After he described to me how he make chilies in the wok, I decided this may be a good video for me to show my viewers how you can use the wok for many other purposes. So if you have just purchased a stainless steel wok and you want to see what else that you could do with it, you might want to take a look at this video. This video will be particularly helpful for you to see what you can use the wok for in the type of cooking that you would have used other type of cooking utensil instead. This is a very simple chili dish that John has made and I'm going to show you how to do this in this video by using my Cucina 14 inch stainless steel wok. Okay, let's go into the kitchen and see what we can do. I'm going to start out with two tablespoon of canola oil. And if you are new to stir frying in the wok, uh, I would like to ask you to watch this part of the video carefully. And because I'm going to season the wok, I use my spot seasoning method. If you want to take a look at this video, you can click the link on the top right hand corner and it will take you to this video. Uh, this method is very simple. After you heat up the wok, you add the oil to the wok and you heat the wok until the oil starts to smoke gently. Then you turn the heat down to low or you turn it off completely and you let the oil to smoke for another 15 seconds. You turn the heat back up and now you are ready to cook. And to cook this dish, I'm going to start off with 8 ounces of ground turkey. And before I add the turkey to the wok, I first marinate it with uh, 1 tablespoon of light soy sauce and this is followed by 1 tablespoon of dark soy sauce. Or you can use whatever soy sauce that you have on hand. Uh, if you don't have any soy sauce, you can skip this step completely. Uh, you can just season it with salt and pepper. I use a kitchen utensil called meat chopper to break up the ground turkey. Uh, this is a very handy kitchen tool. Not only that I use it to break up ground meat, I also use it to break up rice when I make fried rice. After breaking up the ground turkey sufficiently, I switch to my wok spatula uh, going to stir fry the ground turkey. And this is the reason why the wok is a, such a flexible cooking utensil uh, because you can use it to fry meat as well as you can use it to stir fry them. And my goal is to stir fry the turkey until the outside of the turkey that is slightly charred and that will give them great flavor. A ground turkey has a tendency uh, to stick and burn to the bottom of the wok. I get out my water squeeze bottle and squeeze a small amount of water right over the burn area and I use my swap spatula to detach them. And this will allow me to return the flavor back to the dish. At the same time, uh, I am cleaning the wok as I cook and this is the reason why I call this method spot cleaning. Uh, this makes cleaning in the sink much easier when you finish cooking. Next, I add one 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes. Uh, we have a tomato garden during the summer and it is great to use fresh tomato when they are available. Again, the flexibility of cooking is really important because it will allow you to cook more spontaneously and this increase the possibility for you to keep cooking. Next, I add a can of red bean uh, in chili sauce. I probably would have preferred to use black beans uh, because my son really likes 
black beans. But since I don't have that on hand, and I thought, well, this uh, chili beans uh, will do. Now to make the dish more interesting, I decided I'm going to add about half cup of frozen sweet corn. Uh, since I'm going to cook this dish for a little bit longer, uh, I really don't need to thaw out the frozen sweet corn. I take it directly from freezer to the wok, and that definitely saves work. And again, I want to emphasize the flexibility uh, in cooking this dish, uh, because I could have added other type of frozen vegetable to it. For example, I could have added a frozen edamame, which I really enjoy. So you can consider this dish as a template uh, easy for you to make modifications based on what you have on hand. After I let the content to simmer for about a couple minutes, the final ingredients I'm going to add is some chopped white mushroom. I already have the mushroom prep in the refrigerator. All I have to do is to cut them into small pieces. As I've shown here, this dish requires very little advanced prepping, except the mushroom. And if you don't have any mushroom on hand, you definitely can skip this vegetable item. Now also here you can see the reason why I add the mushroom toward the end of the cooking process. Because I do not want to overcook the mushroom, I want the mushroom to retain some of their texture so when I have the chili, I can actually taste the mushroom. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, that in cooking this dish, I uh, require very little advanced prepping uh, because most of the ingredients that I use are uh, either they are frozen that I can thaw out easily, or I can add them directly to the wok, or I just simply open a couple cans. After I did a quick taste test, I really like the flavor the way as it is, so I do not have to make too much adjustment to the flavor. But of course, you can always make adjustment uh, to suit your flavor preference. Uh, if you would like to have a stronger chili flavor, you can always add more chili powder. And if you want it to be spicy, uh, you can add some hot chili pepper flakes. Uh, after uh, doing a quick taste test, uh, I like the flavor the way it is, so I'm not going to make further adjustments. But something I do notice is that uh, there are too much fluid uh, in this chili. So I'm going to thicken it with some cornstarch. I'm going to sprinkle about one tablespoon of cornstarch directly over the chili. And I'm going to use my wash spatula quickly to mix everything up. By this time the chili is done, I shut off the heat. As I am mixing the content in the wok, you can see that the chili start to thicken. Uh, for me, the consistency of the chili is just about right. If you want it to be thicker, you can add more cornstarch. And if you want it to be thinner, uh, you can add more water uh, to dilute it. Uh, John told me that he really enjoyed making this chili in the wok, because the wok has a lot of space uh, for him to stir the content. He said he always feel restricted when he cooked this same dish in a pot or uh, in a skillet. The total cook time of uh, making this chili in the wok is a little bit over 9 minutes. Now of course, uh, you can make this chili in any wok that you have. Uh, but the best wok to make this chili is a stainless steel wok, uh, because the stainless steel wok uh, will not rust. Uh, the problem with other type of wok uh, that with uh, natural surfaces such as carbon steel, like cast iron and cast iron wok, when you cook any food that with high acidic content, it will remove uh, the seasoning on the surface of the wok. Uh, this will lay bare the metal, and those woks has a tendency to rust. And if you use those type of woks, you will notice a difference after you cook this dish. Uh, the surface of the wok will now look dull, because it will lose that oil layer which provides the glistening. Uh, since stainless steel wok will not rust, so this is not a concern. And because of this reason, stainless steel wok is far more flexible as a cooking utensil that can take on many different cooking functions in the kitchen. Uh, John told me that when he first purchased his wok, uh, his intention was to use the wok only for stir-frying. And he told me that there's not a single day he did not discover a new use for the wok. 
He said he's glad that he has purchased uh, the Kusina 14-inch stainless steel wok. Now he said in all his cooking, his wok actually uh, take care of about 95% all of his cooking needs. So I hope this video has given you some ideas that you can use the wok uh, other than the traditional stir-frying. For example, in this dish, you do use the wok first to stir-fry the ground turkey, and then you use it to make the chili. It is this kind of home cooking uh, that makes it both fun and enjoyable uh, to cook in the kitchen on a regular basis. I post a video each day to help people to make home cooking as part of daily routine and use my fast cooking system. If you'd like to learn more about this cooking system, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I thank you for watching, as I'll see you tomorrow.